This conference call may, may contain forward-looking statements within the meaning of Section 27A of the Securities Act of 1933, Cabinet. Securities Exchange Act of 1934. The words believe, expect, anticipate, intend, estimate, may, should, could, will, plan, future, continue, and other <coughs> expressions that are predictions of or indicate future events and trends and that do not relate to historical matters identify forward-looking statements. These forward-looking statements are based large, largely on our <clears throat> expectations, can be affected by inaccurate assumptions, and are subject to various business risks and known and unknown uncertainties, a number of which are beyond our control. Therefore, actual results could differ materially from the forward-looking statements contained in this document, and readers are cautioned not to place undue reliance on such forward-looking statements. Digital Ally will undertake no obligation to publicly update or revise any whether as a result of new information, future events, or otherwise. A wide variety of factors could cause or contribute to such differences and could adversely impact revenues, profitability, cash flows, and capital needs. There can be no assurance that the forward-looking statements contained in this document will, in fact, transpire or prove to be accurate. Now, I'd like to turn the call over to Stan Ross. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Um, I've got with me Tom Heckman, the company CFO. Uh, Tom will do a quick recap of uh, last year's numbers and fourth quarter numbers, and then we'll probably move <laughs> rather quickly on into uh, visiting about what we still believe uh, 2020 uh, looks like in regards to our existing products and also touch on uh, our most recent press release that we announced today concerning uh, the disinfectant uh, that we will now be marketing to our first responders as well. So Tom, I'll let you uh, do a little quick recap and then we'll get into the, the forward-looking stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Stan, and, and welcome, everyone. I appreciate you joining us today. I do want to let you know that we have filed our, our Form 10-K with the SEC this morning. Um, and it is a, a full recap of, of the year 2019 versus 2018. And I, I certainly refer you to in, in any significant detail. I'll try and hit some of the high points. And I know, you know, with the current environment and everything that's going on, you know, 2019 seems like ancient history with what we're dealing with right now. So uh, I won't spend a lot of time with it. We'll, we'll talk about what, what's happened recently. Uh, including in the first quarter here and, and where we sit today. So anyway, with that in mind, I will tell you that, that 2019 on a bottom line, we were about five and a half million uh, here. And that was primarily due to the patent litigation settlement that we uh, we entered into with WatchGuard. We, we gained $6 million in, in uh, uh, funding through that, uh, offset by a $3.3 million increase in our patent litigation liability, the fair value of that. So in, in essence, that <clears throat> that contributed about three, a little less than $3 million to our bottom line. So we, we had good good improvement elsewhere. Uh, if you look at the top line, uh, really, I think it's more indicative uh, of two factors. Number one, we're trying to move people more to a service plan uh, and platform rather than a, a product sale, a hardware sale uh, program. Uh, in that regard, uh, you know, our overall sales declined 15%, but our service and other income increased by 25%. Not income, I mean revenue. Uh, and it's, it's clear why we're doing that. Our, our, our margins, our gross margins on service uh, hit 77% in uh, 2019 versus 76% in 2018. So uh, our overall plan seems to be working from that standpoint. We are shifting more sales uh, to the service, um, service uh, channel rather than the hardware sales. And the second reason for that is we did introduce Evo HD in the middle point of last year. And as, ex as expected, uh, our customers took a pause to look. Uh, it is a revolutionary new, new platform that, that we're very proud of, uh, but it is taking some time for, for our customers to review it, test it, and, and adopt it. And in that regard, uh, you know, we, we did uh, do a press release, I think, last week about 
a pretty nice order we got for EVOs. I will tell you also uh, the domestic order that we got for EVOs. I will tell you that we had uh, a, a rather large international order uh, in the hopper to, to ship in, in March of 2020. Uh, that was was and is delayed because of the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, you know, countries and, and certainly foreign countries have have uh, uh, their hands full with the coronavirus. So uh, I think the line here is that we are seeing some very good traction. Uh, customers are very receptive to the Evo HD in, in the new platform and the connect. And I believe it'll be the bellwether for for years to come. Uh, with that in mind, it, it did hamper our hardware sales in 2019 uh, as well. So uh, let's talk about a few other things that, that have happened more recently. Um, you know, we did uh, 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 complete a two and a half million dollar underwritten public offering in March at a dollar fifteen per share. Uh, gross proceeds of roughly three million dollars. Uh, we're, we're very happy to get that done before the coronavirus. Uh, epidemic really became uh, uh, problematic in the capital market. So we got that done in early March, and we're glad we did that. Um, you know, our first quarter quarter revenues, I will say, are very similar to last year, uh, which, you know, I think given the, the, the situation, most people would be pretty happy with that. But for I would, speaking for myself, and I think even Stan, we're both very disappointed in that. We started the year January, February, uh, with double-digit increases over prior year revenues. We were, we were seeing good traction. Uh, you know, the EVO was starting to hit a little bit. Uh, and in March, we had several large international orders as well as domestic orders uh, that were set to go out. We even had them on pallets ready to ship at one time uh, that got delayed because of the, the impact of the coronavirus. So uh, although first quarter is going to be very similar to last year, uh, we're disappointed in that we did not get the opportunity to ship orders that that uh, that should have been shipped uh, given normal times rather than what we're we're currently experiencing. So, uh, <clears throat> also I would tell you that uh, the Axon litigation, uh, we did a a um, press release that announced the oral arguments were were supposed to happen today, and because of the coronavirus thing and and other. Uh, factors. The the appellate court issued a a, a um, order that they were not going to do oral arguments. That they were going to rule upon uh, the briefs as submitted by the by the two parties. Uh, Stan and I really look looking through the tea leaves. It's only our judgment is we believe that's good news, but we don't know until they actually issue. Uh, and quite frankly, we don't know when they're going to issue with what's going on. When they're going to um, you know, meet and, and go over the, uh, you know, an outcome for that appellate hearing. So yeah. it's my understanding, Tom, that the, the briefs will be submitted today. So that's still taking place. And, um, you know, in talking to our um, uh, litigation team, uh, we believe that maybe because of the fact that they're not now going through the trouble of oral arguments, but are ruling based upon just the briefs that they may be able to actually move a little quicker. So we still think, at least from, you know, they shut the, completely shut the courts down and don't allow them to, um, uh, to make any kind of rulings, that we should see something, you know, I would say within the next 45 days. So it could be rather quickly, is uh, they're not having people walking through and in and out of the courtroom. Uh, they could be sitting around the table right now and all parties looking at it and, and um, saying, uh, what's your thoughts on it? So, uh, but we do. Uh, the fact that they, they did not, uh, and they did elect to go ahead and instead of postponing it, uh, went ahead and did a, um, uh, what do you want to say, just said, hey, guys, you don't need to come come here. We've got enough or believe that our position, you know, we can get to a position to rule on it by just using the briefs. Um, we, look, we look upon that as somewhat favorable. Uh, we would have thought that if, for some reason, um, they weren't um, interested in in hearing our side of it, as we're the ones that actually filed, they would at least postpone and gave given us our day in court. So uh, we're hopeful that it, it'll continue to move forward and we'll get something on that in the next uh, 45 days. Okay. Thank you, Stan. And I, I just got a couple other things I'll mention. 
uh, we, we were uh, in deficient with the NASDAQ listing requirements, continued listing requirements. Uh, we've filed several 8Ks and, and uh, uh, releases that, that describe that event. Uh, Stan and I met with the NASDAQ board in February uh, and presented our compliance plan, which we're happy to, to announce, or I think we have announced already, that, that uh, the NASDAQ was very receptive and, and approved our plan. Uh, and gave us until June 30 of 2020 to uh, to achieve that plan. Now, with the current environment, we we kind of expect that 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 will be delayed because of you know everything that's going on with the coronavirus and I stack companies with with deficiency is, issues uh, as well as as us that the NASDAQ's dealing with. So I I hope that that gets delayed, but I, I don't know that it'll get delayed. We don't, and we will certainly. Uh, apprise the market when and if we hear from the NASDAQ on, on the exact date, uh, if that's going to be delayed at all. Uh, I would tell you from a coronavirus perspective, we have made some changes in our operating plans, um, you know, including having people work from home. You guys have, uh, have seen, hopefully you've seen the press release this morning. We've taken a, on a new line of products to help our first responders deal with the coronavirus uh, uh, onset uh, to disinfect, you know, cars, uh, any kind of surface, jails, tables, what, whatever it is. Uh, the product that uh, I'm sure you guys will, will, will want to buy for a number of years, uh, we have a, a distributorship for that, and we're, we're going to hit our, our um, customer base with an email blast today, and we, we expect and we hope that we'll get a very good response from that because this uh, this is an exciting product. It's non-toxic uh, and it's uh, approved by the EPA to fight the coronavirus as well as a number of other uh, you know contaminants and bacteria and viruses, including HIV, MRSA, um, uh, I can't remember C diff, uh, Salmonella. There's, there's a ton of them. If you go if you go to our website, you know, and again, bear with us that uh, it's getting. Uh, more and more information put on it, you know, virtually every hour. But uh, you could get on there and get a pretty good understanding. And there's some links that take you to the, I think it's the FDA and the um, and the EPA, all, the, the the appropriate government sites to give you a little more uh, understanding. And you know, and just touching on it, Tom, since we're on it right now, is the the product itself. We've been knowledgeable about it and, and sat there and um, did a little bit of preliminary, um, I would say, marketing and talking to a few of our key customers if they would have a level of interest in the product. And we were overwhelmed with um, uh, those that, that clearly said they have an interest. And in talking to our team, and we realized this, this is as far as the sanitation, you know, the cleanliness, on and on, you know, that is going to be looked at, scrutinized. Um, you know, even our government has said that, you know, they're concerned about if we get past these next month or so that still need to be on high, you know, alert and to go into the flu season uh, later this year, that it could come back around. And until we really get a vaccine for it, it's, it's going to be with us. So um, with the, you know, thousands of, of uh, departments that currently buy from us that could utilize it, the amount of taxi cabs, um, uh, just, you know, there are multiple customers that we have and have all shown very strong um, levels of interest in the product. I would be, um, we just literally launched it today and, and told our in a few hours, but, um, uh, just really surprised by the amount of interest and those that are already um, placing orders um, uh, for shipments that will go out later this week. We have a very good relationship with the uh, the bottling company or, or let's say the, uh, the, the master distributor that uh, we work very closely with and have had a relationship with for some time. So we are excited about it. We think that this is a area that really could have an impact in uh, our 2020 numbers. And uh, we will update you all uh, in the form of a press release 
as we see how um, things play out for, uh, let's just say, the month of April, we'll give you an update, we'll let you know how many, um, uh, you know, gallons or thousands of gallons or what, whatever the magic number may be, we'll let you know. But we are very excited about this product. Yeah, and I, I, I would just add a, a couple of comments and, and uh, then turn it back to Stan. To uh, I'm sure you guys have uh, many co comments and questions about where we're headed, but, you know, we're, we're looking at this as a new – uh, channel for uh, Digital Ally to, to help first responders, not only first responders, but, you know, it really fits in well with the rest of our businesses. You know, we have uh, ambulances, so it, it really fits like a glove with our, with our <coughs> customer list, and obviously we're going to exploit that, but we believe it's going to bring in new new channels as well. And, and give us avenues to also sell them hardware and, and services uh, surrounding our, our uh, uh, recording products. So anyway, we're, we're excited about it. We're looking for other ones too. I mean, there's, there's other uh, products that we're looking at that, that we may take on in a similar look for us to, to try and, try and uh, improve revenues through, through other channels as well. So with that, I'll turn it back to, to Stan, and I'm sure you guys have more questions for us. Yeah, and Tom, you know, as, as everybody uh, should know that's on the call, that, you know, we also have been making quite a bit of headway in regards to our uh, new uh, breathalyzer that has our uh, patent associated with it. That continues to come, uh, come along real nicely in the being able to uh, have that uh, out later this year. So yeah, we will continue to look at uh, mainly different products. I don't know if I want to say channels, but different products that can really easily fit into uh, the existing distribution channels that we have. And then um, that will have a ripple effect leading into other areas. Obviously with our relationship, a lot of the entities, you know, from football to uh, NASCAR, you know, those are avenues that will continue to, uh, we'll be able to expand on with, with some of our products. And we also will be actually bringing in uh, sub distributors in regards to a couple of our products that uh, have their own channels and, and network in place too. So excited about, you know, um, you know what we have ahead of us. Uh, like all of us, things get back to normalcy so that um, uh, we can all be uh, shaking hands again at some point in time and, and uh, being able to talk business across from the table versus uh, over the phone. So anyways, we'll go ahead and um, open this up for the uh, Q&A uh, side of our call. At this time, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1. Again, that's star 1 for any questions. We'll pause for just a moment to compile the Q&A roster. The first question will come from Brian Kinslinger with Alliance Global Partners. Please go ahead. Hey, guys. Hope you're doing well. Thank um, you, Brian. With the, with the current revenue base, how are you addressing overhead? And can you talk about, uh, with your business being essential, but volumes down, where you can take operating expenses? It looks like you were at about $15 million in 2019, which I assume includes the $3 million in litigation expense you discussed. So where can we take that to right now? Yeah, o overhead wise, we, we've pared down. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say substantially, but we've we've pared down in the areas that 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 really are flat uh, or or actually non-existent in, in this economy right now with coronavirus. I'm thinking like event solutions and and likewise. So uh, we've we've made cutbacks uh, both employees and, and overhead in those areas that that makes sense. Uh, but I will tell you that that uh, certain areas of commercial. Uh, is is revving up. Uh, private security uh, seems to be doing real well, um, as well as our, our uh, regular uh, law enforcement business. So, you know, there's areas that we have cut back in because those areas are dead in the water right now until the economy really opens back up. Uh, uh, it'll go down, uh, <laughs> as, but I cannot tell you how much. Uh, depending on uh, where else we cut and, and what else we do, but we're, we're looking at every 
every overhead expense, obviously, and trying to trying to make it uh, right versus you know what what kind of revenues we're generating from those channels. Yeah, a lot a lot of it, you know, some of the expenses, as you can imagine, instead of um, you know uh, us you know going to trade shows and other events. I mean, even all our outside reps are basically considered inside reps. I mean, they're happen to keep the relationships by phone. Um, we do a tremendous amount of webinars, um, you know, to try to keep everyone educated and get new uh, business through through those means. But the um, the expenses of, of being out on the road is non-existent, you know, pretty much right now. So there are a lot of uh, areas that uh, the expenses have came down dramatically, let alone the areas where we really did have to pare back, as Tom was saying, that because of the the, the opportunities are non-existent for a while. Great. And then in terms of the disrupted supply chain, what supplies are you having trouble procuring? Where are they procured from? And is there any communication from suppliers as to when this might improve? Yeah, as you might expect, we do get some of our, our uh, camera products uh, from the Orient, specifically uh, uh, South Korea. Uh, those, those suppliers obviously have been affected. Uh, but it really hasn't hurt us that bad. You know, we've had some delays, but we've eventually got uh, the ordered quantities and, and, and uh, uh, products. So, you know, yes, we have been affected. It has slowed down, uh, but, but um, you know, we are getting products from those, those companies and suppliers, and, and uh, we don't think that that will be an ongoing problem uh, once the coronavirus thing kind of passes. Great. And then last question. Can you expand on the press release comment that you are evaluating acquiring distribution rights for several products? Just some more detail on what this might mean. Yeah, you know, as we look at um, and have seen the level of interest in the current products that that we're that we're out there with, it's clearly opened our eyes up to um, other potential. Uh, we have the capability of being able to produce and could implement and, and, and sell through our existing channels. So we're looking at what all, not only the, you know the current product, but additional ones along this line, uh, how we can expand on that. And again, as I mentioned, we're still excited about you know our breathalyzer hitting the marketplace. We do have a, a next generation of body camera that uh, we have not you know pumped the brakes on at all. We're still going. Full speed ahead for it to, uh, to to get to development. We have the um, what we call the 250 in a box uh, or or the um, 250 fleet. Uh, that's for over the road um, uh, truckers, and that product too is is right around the corner. So there's several additional products that we have in you know that we've been working on, and others that we believe now with sort of the the changing environment. That we clearly have the capabilities to um, uh, to get into, and uh, you know, and again, I one one I just need to wait a little while longer and explain on. But there, there are some even medical devices that we have the capability of of um, design and producing. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Brian Lubitz with Ages. Please go ahead. Good morning, boys. Morning Brian. Morning, Brian. Family and all the friends out there are being safe and uh, everyone is healthy. Um, as you know, I'm on the island and we're becoming the hot spot. So, uh, you know, my, my thoughts and prayers are out to you guys and your families, put it that way. Yeah, and, and, and your way as well, Brian. All right, so first thing I want to touch base on, um, and then I'll segue back to obviously COVID, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, for the quarter and obviously for the full year going up substantially from last year as you guys are segueing from being more of a product-based sales company to, you know, having that residual sticky business, if you will. Um, can you guys give us a mix of how much of that is actually from generating, uh, you know, off of the data plans, uh, monthly storage fees, and how much of it is actually from, I guess, Yeah, uh, the lion's share of that, uh, Brian, is, is from uh, warrant, uh, extended warranty 
uh, services and installation services, if you will. The data plans, as you might expect, they're, they're covered over three to five years, so it's a much smaller number, but there's really no costs associated with it. So if you look at sheer numbers, uh, the warranty revenue, uh, the extent of warranty revenue is larger, installation revenue is larger, but there's virtually no cost, very little cost on the uh, on the data plans, and that so it's a little misleading from that standpoint. Okay, so now off of that, um, in regards to gross margins and being that there's very little cost in the data, uh, how do we get that number up? Is it just by you guys signing new contracts or? You know, is that three-year deal, does it kind of preclude you, even with new contracts, getting that number higher and higher? No, I, I think the, the, the major effect on this year and even last year's um, uh, gross margin numbers is, is some re, uh, reserves we took against uh, inventory of the older product. You know, we, we were introducing the Evo HD, and, and so we knew that, the older product lines would, would really dissipate. We're in line with uh, bringing on this new Evo business. So that's really what, what's affecting that. I think now that we've, we've pretty much got that behind us, we know where we're headed there. Uh, I think you're going to see some, some growth in the gross margins uh, just from the standpoint that we've already taken our hits on, on, uh, on obsolete and excess inventory. Okay. As far as your sales team, is it, I, I don't want to say a mandate, but is it uh, of utmost importance that they sign up customers with the data program, being that the uh, the margins are so good there? Yeah, well, we're <laughs> this new Evo HD platform is a connected platform, uh, Brian. So by, by definition, you sell on Evo HD, you're generally selling a, a connected program, you know, a cloud-based program. We're also moving, you know, Full speed ahead on our our uh, body cameras. Money on the hardware for body camera. The real money is in is in the data plan and, and the storage. So we're we're moving headlong into that, and and you know, we're trying to phase out the older uh, storage requirements, which would be you know local in nature. So we're we're moving uh, post haste into that type of uh, scenario. Okay, super. Um, now, I also want to touch base with uh, Stan. I believe you mentioned that you guys even had product on, you know, the, the, the skids to go out um, on the pallets, and then you, you kind of had to pull it back. Um, is that based upon international orders where our borders are being shut down, their borders are being shut down? What, what's the reason why that, that order didn't actually get shipped out? It, it was, Brian. I mean, because of the... Uh, you know, the virus, they, they said, look, we want to put everything on hold. Do you mind, you know, just holding that until we see where we can have the product sitting on our dock versus sitting on theirs because they still need to have us come over and assist in the deployment and get them all set up. And so uh, it's not that the um, opportunity or the orders are going away. It's just a matter of, of timing when uh, travel, um, you know, opens back up for us all. We, I mean, so, just no, give you an example, Brian. I mean, uh, unfortunately, we had, um, um, you know, one of our key employees um, uh, was out in Colorado and, and just made a quick trip. And, and while they're out there, um, our governor said anyone that's traveling from Colorado to Kansas has to be self-quarantined for 14 days. So, you know, it's just one of those that um, stay at home is, is um, even though we're, you know, somewhat exempt and, and uh, have the ability to come into the office, we're still trying to do the best we can to keep those people that can work from home at home and, and, um, and safe. So um, it, just, it just got pushed back a little bit. Okay, so I just want to be clear. No orders have been canceled. They've just been delayed. Yeah, so here, here's where I'm at. I mean, one of the things, as you know, we gave guidance of the 13 and a half, and I know that a lot of people have been pulling their guidance. Um, we have still seen law enforcement to be somewhat strong. We also, you know, um, realized with some of the new products that we have coming in and the strength that they could add to our um, overall numbers, um, I'm reluctant to pull our guidance at this point 
um, as I believe that we still clearly have the capabilities of, of hitting our number. And, th and that's going to be a big year-over-year -year number, as, as you can tell. I mean, we're still saying that we'll exceed 13 and a half. Now, you, can, you let me get another 30, 60, 90 days down the road, and we continue to see, um, you know, things put on hold. Then I may, on, on our next call, um, be a little different. But at this point in time, I'm pretty excited about, still very excited about 2020. Okay, so you're, you're still confident in the numbers, and that's good, and obviously you guys are essential. Um, one of the things I can tell you, just as a fact, it, it's being reported here in New York uh, by the Wall Street Journal that over 1,500 police officers actually have the virus. Um, right. You know, it, it's... So I don't know, you know, obviously they're still working, they're still out there uh, as a whole, but those 1,500 are home. Um, the 5,000 body camera order that you guys got from the police force down, uh, I believe, in South America, is, is that something where is, uh, we're seeing a disruption with them as well, being that they're international, or uh, is that something that's moving full speed ahead? No, no, with 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 them being international, it's it's uh, slowed it up a little bit. Okay, so that is for that. But again, one. that okay. that one was that one was never in the in the in what I want to say the queue in regards to our numbers. We never had that one in. That wasn't even on the uh, radar in regards to our our thirteen and a half number. By the way. Yeah, when you guys gave guidance in October of last year, what you're saying is that guidance for thirteen and a half million does not include the five thousand body cameras. We yeah we didn't. We didn't know how that was going to play out. Okay, um, and, and one other thing, Stan, you had mentioned back, uh, you know, in the third quarter when you gave guidance, and I've also seen you on Bloomberg and given some uh, interviews and radio dial-ins and things of that nature. Um, that you guys are, are, you know, the expected first quarter to be really big with new contracts. Obviously, we've had some, uh, but you guys are really close to a uh, nationwide fleet in terms of a trucking company. Can you elaborate on that at all? So, so that's still in the works. It still looks like it's coming together. And, and what we did and, and have been doing is working with a couple of companies, one in particular that really has, I would say, the last um, ingredients that we need to, you know, to, to finalize, um, you know, the recipe that we're putting together for the over-the-road uh, industry. Uh, we have pretty much everything, and, and they're actually missing what we have, and so we look to uh, try to get that still finalized right away, and then that would be a very big launch that we would anticipate because of our partnerships um, in a lot of areas would uh, have a very good and quick significance um, to our numbers. Uh, being being specific, Stan, uh, is that related to the partnership you guys announced with Mobile Insight Data? That that is absolutely one of them. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and now that guidance, uh, you know, that that guidance came before that announcement of that contract. So obviously, if you announce something with the partnership with them, that would be in addition to the 13 million as well. Well, we, we, we knew this was coming into play. I, we just don't know how big it is. So, um, you know, we, we've been working on this for some time, so we just went to see. I, let, me, let me have a good quarter of, um, of uh, you know, being able to be out on the streets, and then I'll have a better sense of how to give some guidance. Okay, and the last thing I would say to you is uh, with your press release today, Again, everyone's being affected by coronavirus. Uh, you know, obviously you guys are moving into a, a new revenue stream potentially with, uh, you know, the partnership and distributing of the Danalite solution. Um, are you guys going to just be a distributor and you're using your, uh, your channels that you already have with your customers, i.e. The, the ambulances and the police stations and taxis, et cetera? Or are you actually going to be sending in crews to do it, to do the disinfecting and all of the work uh, related to that product as well? Right. At this time, we're just being what I would call more of a master distributor. Um, we have relationships with others that will be sub-distributors that have different marketing channels that could utilize the product as well. But we clearly have a, um, 
very nice agreement um, and, you know, with room to um, bring on some additional sub-distributors. And at that point in time, that, that will be our role. Now, some of these um, end users would be those that would be utilizing for, uh, cleaning facilities and um, as such. But we okay. don't see us walking in there doing that at this point. So you don't have to worry about obviously getting you know your workforce suited up and you know masked up and actually flying around the country. You're just going to ship okay. the product via your partnership with uh, you know the solution Dana White. Right, right. I think I think what we'll do is continue to uh, provide the product, and then um, uh, those that have a lot more experience at it than us, uh, let them go ahead and do the ap actual applications. Okay, and now as far as that market being concerned, um, you know, obviously here again, Long Island, New York, we're kind of a epicenter. You know, we're all kind of getting. It's very fluid. Let's put it that way. The whole situation of the coronavirus, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out two things that America needs to get back to work is going to be testing and obviously cleaning. Um, how big do you see this market being? for this type of a product? I mean, do you guys see it moving into schools and hospitals, or is it just going to be, you know, police and, and ambulances? Brian, we, we've, we've had numbers that, you know, we've had numbers that we believe, if they play out, because you do know that we, we do have relationships with schools, taxi cabs, ambulances, police, um, you know, cruise ships, on and on and on. That you know, I don't, I don't want to say something out there that, that just was crazy, but I mean, you guys can put two and two together. I mean, it, it may, you may see it um, at least for 2020, you know, reinvent the company in some fashion. Uh, and I'd hate to say this, but to where you guys are calling up and saying how many, you know. Um, tens of thousands, hundred thousands gallons did you sell this quarter versus how many body cameras? I mean, it's it, it's the hot item right now, and some of the preliminary numbers that we hear that some of our end users are going through and would like to give us a shot are just, you know, mind-boggling how big they can be. So, Brian, I, I don't even want, I really don't want to touch it. You guys are going to have to put two and two together on that one. I'll, I'll make sure, and again, I'll try to give an update at the end of the month when I when I've got the numbers, and just do something in the form of a of a, of a press release that says to everyone that um, you know we've been very pleased with the launch. Uh, to date, we have seen orders and shipments in excess of X, whatever that may be. So that'll give you as much uh, visibility as I can give you. The next question is from Alan Lyons with Vessel Venture Capital. Please go ahead. Okay, thanks, Dr. Hi, Stan and Tom. Glad to hear you guys are all safe and healthy at this terminless time for sure. Um, the question I had, I noticed you have um, 4.8 million warrants outstanding. Assuming you can, have you given any consideration to reduce the extra price, price for one month and that people exercise it? at a current price, they can do it, and if they don't, it reverts back to the original terms. You know, that some of that's been thrown around uh, as an option, and instead of doing anything new and, and um, you know, additional dilution for as something new coming off, off the, the table, um, I think what, you know, sort of where we're postured right now is just really wanting to see how uh, a couple of the events play out. I mean, let's just say that we are fortunate enough to have, um, you know, a ruling and, and, and fortunate enough that the ruling goes in our favor in regards to the appeal. I would think it'd have a very, very, very strong impact on the stock. And so a lot of those warrants would be getting exercised at, I believe, at full price. So we, we have taken into consideration what, what you're saying and thought about it. Um, we're just, man, there's just so much going on right now that we're uh, trying to figure out how to play the cards every day. But that's a, that's a great um, great comment that you made there. 
I understand. And you don't want to do it prematurely, but obviously cash is king here. And uh, but depending how these turn out, uh, uh, you don't know. So um, I'm glad you're thinking about it. And that's for you guys to decide. Yep. Yep. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Be safe. Thank you. You too. Well, listen, I want to thank everybody for um, uh, calling in today and all the great questions um, on behalf of Digital Ally and all of our employees. We, too, wish um, everyone the best and to be safe and um, can't thank our first responders and, and all our healthcare workers and so many people that are still out there on the front lines uh, doing what they can, um, you know, for the betterment of us all. So we, uh, we appreciate um, everybody's effort and and um, we'll do our best to keep everyone informed on, on how we're doing. And uh, everybody be safe. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for participating in today's conference call. You may now disconnect.